Hello, Peter. What's happening? Um, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. Okay. Oh, oh, and I almost forgot. Um, uh, I'm also gonna need you to go ahead and come in on Sunday too. If you're a quiet quitter, you're a loser. You're un-American. That's what I think. We're still doing this somehow. We're still having this conversation about quiet quitting. And now the sharks are getting involved. Yeah, people that shut down their laptop at five want that balance in life, want to go to the soccer game, nine to five only. Let me ask you a question, Joanna. Mm. What do you think of a person who only does the bare minimum? Huh, what do I think? Um, you know what, Stan? If you want me to wear 37 pieces of flair like your uh, pretty boy over there, Brian, why don't you just make the minimum 37 pieces of flair? Well, I thought I remembered you saying that you wanted to express yourself. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I do. I do want to express myself. Okay, then I don't need 37 pieces of flair to do it. All right, there's my flair, okay? And this is me expressing myself, okay? There it is. I hate this job. I hate this goddamn job and I don't need it. People that shut down their laptop at five want that balance in life, want to go to the soccer game, nine to five only. They don't work for me, I can tell you that. I hope they work for my competitors. Kevin O'Leary is a Canadian businessman who you might know from the reality show Shark Tank. It's that show where People come to investors to pitch their ideas and they sit kind of like this for a bit before deciding whether or not they want to rip these people off with scammy investments. And look, I'm sure there's some that are fine, that's just don't sue us, but the point is he's made to look like this business expert and his record shows that he's really not. And now Kevin O'Leary has been hammering this quiet quitting thing for a while now and he even said this. Now, some ideas are bad ideas, as some ideas are stupid ideas, but very rarely can you combine both. And that's what we have here. This is the dumbest idea I've ever heard in launching a career. If you're a quiet quitter, you're a loser. You're un-American. That's what I think. You hear that? Dude, you're, you're Canadian, bro! <laughs> the Canadian thinks you're un-American! By the way, that's what I love about these rich fucks, because, like, it's so clear that they scoff at the idea of of like national national pride or like paying their taxes or whatever but the moment they can turn the screws they think you are you're stupid they think you're a dummy and they're going to use nationalism to get you to work for their profit more <laughs> it's like if you imagine if you went to this guy was like i want you to give me x y and z he'd be like you can you don't get anything for free Except when I'm talking to my employees, in which case they have to work for me for free. Un-American if you quiet quit. I'm sure some of you know that Kevin O'Leary was born in Montreal, Canada, is a Canadian citizen, and has never been an American, so it's a little bit funny to see him saying you're un-American if you quiet quit. Now, what is quiet quitting? We've talked about it before in these videos. It's when people do their job. It's when people don't Jesus do Christ, things they dude. aren't being paid for. It's when people don't take on extra work outside of their job description. Now it's on you to decide how you want to live your life, how you want to work. You can do that if you think there's a possibility of advancing. But the thing is, they're all attacking it. All the business leaders, all the business press, they're attacking- I'm gonna go ahead and disagree with Jordan. I think that if you work above and beyond what you're paid and contracted to do, you're a class trader cuck and you're a piece of shit. I think if you're the type of person who comes in early and stays late, you suck. Fuck you. I hate you. I despise you. I think you're the worst person. I'd rather have a shirker than somebody who does that. Fuck you. Here's what I want you to do. Join in solidarity. And if you want to, if you think we should work, be able to work more, you should come in collectively bargain with me to get a contract so that when you show up early and stay late they have to pay you overtime also if you answer your phone while you're on vacation you're also scum in car and thank you for the tier one solidarity baby some people have anxiety and think they'll get fired you will get fired anxiety holders you will be fired no matter what you do 
no matter how hard you work or how early you go in or how late you stay or how much extra work you take on, they're going to fire you anyway. Now that you know that, you can relax. Now you know that, you can relax. You don't have to do all that shit. In this trend, which isn't really a trend, it was made up. People have always been able to decide for themselves whether or not they wanted to fulfill their job description or do things they aren't being paid for. Go the design field demands that I work overtime on design projects because clients are in a rush. As long as you charge them, as long as you charge them, that's what I'm telling you. You're allowed, if you want to work 60 hours a week or you can, fine. But you better be getting that overtime. What does overtime mean? That means if you work 60 hours a week, you get paid like you work 80. But if you're working extra for free, you're a fucking cuck. Above and beyond, as they say. And again, you can decide how you want to live your life. Sometimes there is a good job prospect waiting for you. Sometimes there is a promotion waiting for you. But oftentimes there's not. Bit of not. a long shot, but and if any legal Andes in chat are interested in working in the policy slash regulatory side of a militant union, we're hiring. Yay, nice. The reason the business press is attacking this and trying to treat it like it's some new trend that millions of workers are doing together at the same time when it's not, but the reason they're attacking it is because that possibility is so easy to hours exploit. means you're paid for 70? Nope. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Here's you're the right. Thing about you're right. We all knew right. the whole time right. that what we were doing wrong. was unsustainable. You're right. It's time Everybody. and a half, the not two and a half. Knew, not two the workers knew, HR knew, See, it's the really funny because I once had a job. I once had a job that was in the Teamsters Union. And... One of the things that was really great was every single time there was a holiday, you didn't get time and a half. You got double time. And if you worked overtime on a, on a holiday, you get triple time. They gave you triple time. So people would be like, you working on Christmas? Goddamn right I'm working on Christmas. <laughs> Look, surprise. It couldn't be sustained. People have realized that they're giving and giving and giving, and they're not getting... In return making you think that a promotion or a raise is just around the corner and the only thing that stands between you and that raise or promotion is I got extra three work. and a half times at my last job for holiday work there you go exactly what i'm talking about only benefits your boss only benefits your employer and ultimately it just helps their bottom line because the more work you do the more work you take away from a potential hire and that potential hire that they don't end up hiring saves them money and increases their profits. You following me here? The reason they want to quash this trend, even just quash this idea, is because they want you to do more work at your same base salary exactly. so they can make more money and profit. That's it's right. It's that simple. And all of these different types of things, these post-pandemic conversations we're having about people working, Ultimately, one of the things that's really funny is it's the socialists that tell the workers to think about what type of system you're in. You're in capitalism. The capitalists want you to work like you're in a socialist fucking paradise. Meanwhile, they act like ruthless capitalists that will cut your throat if it gives them an extra cent. And they're telling you to, that they're in a family, that we're all working together. We're all communal. <laughs> it's funny. And it's, I'm telling you, think of your job like what it is. You are a wage slave. You are selling yourself for a wage. And the moment they don't have a use for you, you're gone. So you need to start working and acting collectively for your own benefit. Capitalists telling workers to think altruistically is one of the funniest things I've ever fucking seen. Just benefit companies. The return to the- To me, profit is how much money the company has, slash agency has stole from you. Exactly. But your company's like, we have posted record profits. Unless they're saying, and therefore we're giving you a bonus, and therefore we're giving you stock, that company just stole from you. Viscous, thank you for the 20 tier ones. The office helps them justify high price real estate that they're renting out or own. It's so they can easily micromanage you back in the office. It's a little harder to micromanage without surveillance software, and that's a conversation outside of this, but still, People are comfortable. Getting paid more does not mean you make less due to taxes. Yeah, that never works. What? That never, that's never how it works. That's never how it works. Even if the tax rate was 99%, working more would still mean you got more money. I had a libertarian ANCAP tell me workers should negotiate with employers by themselves with no minimum wage, etc. 
and you'll come to the conclusion of what works best for both. But if we all have that understanding, why even have money then? Well, no, I mean, the reason why that doesn't work is because the libertarian ANCAP has failed Econ 201. Now, this is an Econ 201 class. This is the next class you have after intro to Econ, all right? In the next class, they talk to you about uh, what's known as uh, uh, the problems with the efficient market hypothesis. One of the problems with the efficient market hypothesis for something like wages is the efficient market hypothesis assumes perfect information. What's that mean? That means that both sides in a negotiation have access to all available information in the universe. That's what they assume. So whenever you hear an ANCAP going, oh, well, you could just negotiate with your own, uh, to your own salary, they're assuming that you have all available relevant information in the universe. You don't. And so you don't have perfect information. What, what happens in actual reality is that the employer knows exactly how much money your job will make for them typically before they hire you, or at least they have a good estimate. So when you come in, you don't know that information. So you actually don't know what they're able to pay and what they're not able to pay and what you're actually going to produce for them. And they count on you not knowing that information so they could lowball your ass. Junk Saint, thanks for the 16 months. You are, a career, uh, you are a contract company that works at a client site. Client has said that if we join the union that exists in our region, the contract company will lose the account. Is that legal? Uh, huh. Hmm. Uh, according to the National Labor Relations Board, it is unlawful to discourage or encourage union activities or sympathies by discrimination in regard to hire or tenure of employment or any term or condition of employment. For example, employers may not discharge, lay off, discipline employees, or refuse to hire job applicants because they are pro-union. Working from home, people have a healthier work-life balance. People don't have to spend hours sometimes commuting to and from work before and after. That allows them to live their life. But getting people back in the office means they're more likely to do more work there when at the end of the day, they can just close their laptop and be present with their friends or family. I would argue being present and having it looks like megan is sitting out on seeing the queen guess she didn't want to see the final slur what in tech a lot of us interview at new companies every six months the threat of us doing this is enough to get salary increases preemptively their brain thanks for the 19 months at tier three hell yeah brother hell yeah Healthier work hopefully life. you got that for six months so you got the 30 percent discount did you did you get the 30 percent discount by subscribing at tier three for six months did you take advantage of September and save significant amount of money by subscribing for six months? Did you do that? If balance is the way to go. But companies want you back in the office because it's easier to get you to work longer and harder. Look, if you want people... The employer is union, but the client that contracts our employer says we can't be part of that union. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. Uh, work I can't and remember. Pay them more. A, give them a raise. Give them a promotion. Uh, Quit acting like the only sure way to do, do that. that is to get people back in there and to kill this quiet quitting idea. It's really quite simple. If you want more out of someone, pay them. Quite simple, chat. Quite simple. All right. Howard Schultz vows that the Starbucks union drive is not going to be something that is going to significantly change the course of history at Starbucks. You're right. We created health care, free college tuition, equity in the form of stock, all those things. And now all of a sudden, uh, something shows up that's a little bit different than what we prepared for. But this 9,000 company-owned stores and only 300 have been petitioned. And so I think there's been a, a lot made of this that's probably greater. Uh, it, it's not, it's not going to be something that is going to significantly change the course of history for Starbucks. It's that simple. You're right. We created health care. Free we got to smash this motherfucker. We need to get every single one unionized, dude. Are you watching the stream unsubbed? You're making income inequality worse. You are doing anti-praxis. We are the only Twitch stream that will not accept scam advertisers. And I will never fuck you over by selling you crap.